morning ladies and gentlemen jeff jackson here your cropland alfalfa and forage specialist we're going to talk again this morning about prussic acid and sorghum sedan or forage sorghums maybe it's a straight sedan grass where you could have a prussic acid problem following a freeze or a frost so just a little history where i'm at right now here's a, a couple sorghum plants and you can see there's a little damage here so the low temperature on saturday morning was 30 degrees on Saturday morning when I came out here to look at these plants, there was a frost on everything. But at that point, everything looked fine. So a person would assume, hey, we had a frost last night, but everything looks great. We're going to leave the cows out here. So this is a grazing situation. So, you know, folks, everything looked fine on Saturday morning. Sunday morning, it didn't look too bad. We only got into the 50s on Saturday so here's the deal you can see that these leaves this leaf got hit pretty hard it froze pretty well almost all the way back so there's prussic acid in this plant right here when the cell membrane in that leaf ruptures two two substances mix together and it produces a gas called prussic acid that's equivalent to cyanide poisoning so as you look through this plant this leaf is toast this leaf up on top is toast the one right next to it in the back didn't get damaged at all. This little leaf right here didn't get damaged at all. We get down in the canopy, this leaf is fine. So here's the big question, what do we do with this thing? Well, if you're grazing livestock, you need to keep your cows out of here for 10 to 14 days. Let's just be safe and say 14. So if it froze on the 12th and we gotta be out 14 days, that puts us out to the 26th. So we cannot graze this crop due to the fact that this leaf right here, this leaf right here, maybe there's a little in a couple of these others that might kill cows. So keep them out. Now, if we're supposed to stay out till the 26th and it freezes again, and we take this leaf and freeze it, we take this leaf and freeze it, we get some more of these leaves down in here that weren't damaged at all the first time and they get frost damage or we get more damage to the back of this leaf where it didn't catch the front part, there will be prussic acid that builds up in those leaves as well. So if it freezes on the 20th, the calendar starts over. Now these new leaf parts that weren't damaged the first time are toxic. So we have to wait another 10 to 14 days to graze cows. So let's say you're green chopping and you need to take feed from the field to the bunker because you are out of feed. This is not a safe crop to feed green chop. Again, this has prussic acid in it. By the time you chop it and haul it to the bunk and feed it, it will not be enough time for the gas to escape from this leaf material. If you went through a frost and snow and you need to take this crop and you're going to try to do hay or baleage um, or dry hay yet, subject to if you can get it dry, if you're going to do baleage, you're going to come out here, obviously it probably... Uh, take you a day or two to get to it so maybe there's two days in between when you froze and when you get out there some of that gas is going to start to escape and as you go run through there with your swather you're going to ding that plant up crimp it you're going to crimp the stalk maybe some of the leaves as you crimp it and lay it down that's going to let that plant evaporate that prussic acid faster so generally we tell guys if you're going to do baleage or dry hay continue on with the process if you're going to do silage again you're going to probably swath it, wilt it for a couple of days, and chop it into small pieces. As you chop it, the small leaf material, it's going to let the gas escape faster. So really, our two big concerns are grazing and green chop. Otherwise, you should be able to go on with the process, uh, crimp that plant, or chop it, bale it. Put it in, uh, if you're doing baleage, you're going to ferment it. If you're chopping silage, you're going to ferment it. So by the time you... Have a few lag days to wilt, get it to the right moisture, um, ferment, and leave it stored for a while. You should be fine to feed this crop. So it's just a, a matter of feeding it right away after a hard frost. So there's a quick look at prussic acid again. And you can see, again, there's a lot of these leaves that didn't get damaged. Now, let's just say this whole plant froze. It looks dead all the way from top to bottom. In about 10 days, you want to look at the bottom of that plant and just make sure that you have no new tillers at the base of that plant that are trying to regrow. Because if it burns off all the leaf material but doesn't freeze hard enough to kill the plant completely, you might still have some 
tillers that try to regrow from the bottom. So those will be toxic as well. You want to make sure you don't have any issues with those. And the plant has to refreeze again to kill it hard enough to get rid of those tillers as well. Then you have to waiting period again. So at any rate, a little uh, two cents worth there on this again. People ask, well, how much prussic acid does it take to kill a cow? Well, if I told you that I had a glass of lemonade, but there's just a little cyanide poisoning in it, how much of that do you want to drink? So there's the message. Do you want to take a chance of an abortion or a dead cow due to prussic acid? I mean, this is pretty obvious. We have this leaf burn on here, but I'm telling you what, it froze Saturday morning and these symptoms on the plant did not show up till late Sunday afternoon. So again, folks, as that plant, you know, it's toxic right away when it freezes. So if you're a threat of a frost tonight, take them out today so you don't have any of these issues. Again, this is Jeff Jackson. Have a great day. Prussic acid and sorghums.